Hello and welcome to this video. Today we're talking about uh, a video I made, well, actually 10 years ago, almost, about the Sherman filter bank where I sent a sawtooth through it and uh, mangled it with its uh, filters and FM capabilities. And someone in one of the newer videos asked if it would be possible to recreate something like that in the grid. And I found it's it's an interesting idea, so I gave it a try. Uh, do not expect it to sound exactly the same because the Sherman filter bank has Sherman filters which sound unique, uh, and it sounds very dirty <laughs> on purpose. Uh, on top of that, which is kind of difficult to emulate in a digital environment exactly this way, or well, someone would have to take it on. And on top of that, I also think. When it comes to uh, frequency modulation in audio rate or distortion, analog devices have a little edge. Uh, they're a tiny bit better. We will get there eventually in the digital world, but uh, we're not got, not quite there yet. But um, yeah, I, I experimented with it and the results, the result sounds uh, pretty satisfying. So let's give it a try i mean you should have heard it in the intro and if you liked what you heard you yeah this video might be for you okay um here i have something very simple i have let's increase that before i forget it we have an oscillator which plays sawtooth right the index is here why does it not animate i don't know it should and we're going to add an fx grid uh, we could do it, of course, in the instrument, but I want to use this uh, filter bank in uh, every environment. So I'll use a separate instance. Now, um, first we have uh, two filters. And we need a bandpass filter because that's what I used in, in that video. So let's go for the XP because the XP has different filter types. And... We want to use the bandpass 2. Might be interesting to switch to a bandpass 4 if you want a little bit sharper and more aggressive sound, but I think this one comes a bit closer to the Sherman filter bank. So uh, before I forget it, let's turn off um, key tracking because uh, the filter bank, well, it can do it to some degree, but I didn't use it. And now duplicate the filter. Uh, now, yeah. Wire this thing up, hold option to create a mixer, and send a signal into the filter. So the Sherman can uh, blend between serial and parallel filtering seamlessly, but for the example, I used uh, parallel filtering. So that's what we are going to use here as well. Uh, now, let me grab a few things. We don't need to set it up that way, but it will be a little bit easier to control everything if we if we have a few uh, macros that we will lose. Use no, it's not the level. It's a value and a modulator out. Well, I kind of repeat that in every video. I would like to have this little arrow inside the value knob because this is such a common application. Now I will connect this to the cutoff. Let's use a shortcut CTF because we don't have a lot of space here. Turn it down and modulate it to the full extent. So we have both filters linked. This is also something the Sherman filter bank can do. You can link the filter or you can have them separately and you can also kind of uh, put them in a certain ratio to each other, uh, harmonic ratio, in fact, um, which we're not going to do, but we will have uh, ratios between them. So now duplicate this and the second one will we'll kind of. Oh. Yeah, self oscillation. Uh, let's turn that on. Now we can control the resonance here. Duplicate this again, and now want to 
connect it a little bit to the drive input, the input drive. Um, select it, uh, maybe 0.6. And on top of that, the Sherman can also do a filter FM either with an external or an internal signal. But in the example in the video, I used internal FM. So uh, let's duplicate this again. Wire the input up to, oh, that one was wrong anyway, but now we have both. Yeah, rename this to saturation. This one, uh, fill FM, whatever. Just come up with something that uh, you will then later recognize. Okay, this has to be applied to both instances. Well, maybe dot eight, something like that. And make it bipolar as this one is as well. And I prefer the saturation knob also to be bipolar. Um, now below here, we need another one. Another combination of these two, and this will be cut the spread. And as the name says, we will apply it in opposite directions. I don't know exactly how much is ideal, maybe plus 36 semitones and negative 36 semitones. Okay, now we have a basic setup and just to correct for eventual amplitude differences, I'll put in an attenuation knob in here. Let's increase that resonance. Well, this is already quite interesting. Two bandpass filters in parallel with, with a certain distance between them. What we want to do now is find a good position, a good starting point, and then use the spread knob to uh, create this uh, vowel-like effect. Okay, looks like I was lucky because this is exactly where it kind of needs to be. And you will hear differences depending on where you center the cutoff, right? Let's add some filter FM. Yeah, that's a bit too much, just a little bit. Yeah, Filter FM gets especially interesting if you combine it with um, an increased resonance. Okay, we're all, almost in self-oscillation. This little arrow here indicates that uh, from this point on it will uh, self-oscillate. At least I think that's what it indicates because in a manual here there's no mentioning of that but yeah sounds pretty ah yeah of course i adjusted the saturation and then wondering why nothing happens yeah, that's really nice. Now, in addition to all of this, the Sherman can also do amplitude modulation. And what I did in the video is I used an external oscillator, actually one, um, a test oscillator from Logic Pro, which uh, provided me with a signal uh, tuned to about 7000 hertz. So, but here we can just grab an oscillator. Um, let's go for a phase. 
Um, you can use key tracking. Turn um, in, in the example, I didn't use key tracking, which uh, results in, I would say, a little bit harsher sound because then the signal we're modulating changes in frequency, but the, the signal doing the modulation does not change, uh, which gives you a, a bit different results. And yeah, key tracking means they are always in a, in a harmonic relation. So, but we, we can use both modes. I, I like actually both of them. Uh, what we also need is a AMRM module. Place it in front of the attenuator and then hook that up. And so now we have to search for a frequency uh, which sounds reasonable. Yeah, as you can hear, it gives it almost this kind of uh, bit crusher like uh, quality. And And you can hear it sounds a little bit cleaner when key tracking is enabled because the, the frequencies are now in a harmonic uh, relation. Which one to use depends, uh, of course, on the use case and what, what, you, what, what the desired results are. Cool. Now, also, you know, to make it a bit more useful in the future, I mean, we got pages, controller pages for all the modules that are in there, but not, of course, for our macro. So I add a new page and link up the most important modules, cutoff and resonance. Then uh, I want the cutoff spread here. I want the saturation. Uh, that was wrong. Delete that and spread. Yeah, the filter FM should be here and as well the amplitude modulation. Yeah, and that should be the biggest part of it. Now here for just some fun, because yeah, to have some, some context, I added a, um, a low cut because using uh, this filter, you can get quite uh, extreme low end sound, which is not always desired, especially not in the mix. And then uh, just a, a delay for good measure. And of course, there's also a little melody line to uh, yeah put it in, in better context. Now let's see what we achieve. And as you can see, I mean, it's also interesting to use these knobs in combination, for example, yeah, use, use the the cut of center frequency and then modulate the, the cut of spread. Kind of a, okay, the glitch is gone. Uh, let's put, get some saturation. <laughs> Okay, get out of now. Yep, let's add some amplitude modulation. Neat. Now, what's also interesting is, um, well, the Sherman filter bank is mono, so uh, you, you have to buy two if you want to uh, process stereo signals, but uh, in the grid, this is absolutely no problem. We can just go over here 
and uh, turn on unison and uh, let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Yeah, let's, let's add some more context. Let's enable key tracking. Yeah, as you can see, it, it does not sound exactly the same, but we can do very interesting stuff, especially with, with FM and uh, amplitude modulation. Uh, of course, you have to spend some time to, to, you know, to tweak it exactly to what you want and then also map the most important parameters to a uh, preset page and then, of course, save it away. Yeah, that's it in a nutshell. Hope uh, you enjoy your new filter bank. And uh, see you next time. Peace out.